Hey. So, do you really know how to properly use the Pathfinder tools in Adobe Illustrator? Do you really know? Okay, okay. I believe you. But stay till the end of this video and you might learn a couple things that you didn't know about these tools. Hello. For the ones who don't know me, quick introduction, my name is Leo Rivero and I spent over seven years working as a freelance graphic designer. And the idea of this channel is to teach you how to become a better graphic designer. I'm gonna cover the Creative Cloud Suite, programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, even Dimension and many others. I'm gonna be teach to you completely for free. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna teach you about theory of graphic design, typography, logo design, colors, and many other topics that you need to know as a good graphic designer. So without any more delay, let's start designing. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna do is going to the folder that I put in the description of this video and you're gonna download it and you're gonna get this file, which is a presentation that I just made just in for this video. And it's a visual representation of how the tool works. And I believe it's going to help you to understand all these concepts that I'm going to teach you right now more easily. So we're going to first start talking about the pathfinders and the shape modes, which are included in the pathfinder tool in Adobe Illustrator. But before all of that, let's read the concept of the actual website in Adobe Illustrator uh, website. They actually said this in the Adobe software website that you can combine vector objects to create shapes in a variety of ways in Illustrator. The resulting path or shapes differ depending on the method you use to combine the objects. In less words, you can combine or trim shapes using the Pathfinder tools. Again, there are two of them, the shape modes and the pathfinders. The shape modes are the ones located at the top and the pathfinders are the one at the bottom. Normally, the shape modes are used in general for simple shapes and the pathfinders are what you mostly gonna use for more complicated shapes. Okay, let's jump into the shape objects, but before we do anything of the shape objects, I wanna talk about the compound shapes, which I write here, and the non-compound shapes or normal shapes. When you're editing a compound shape, it's a non-destructive and you can actually release the compound path shape. When you do it and with a non-compound shape or just with a normal shape, uh, you're not gonna be able to edit it afterwards because it's gonna create a different type of path. Let's explain it more visually. The first thing I'm gonna try to do with this Unite tool is to show you what the Unite tool does. If you go to the window, Pathfinder, we're gonna have the Pathfinder tool right here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna copy it next to it. I'm gonna place it right here. And what I wanna do with this new object is that in the first one, I'm gonna do it with a normal normal way of doing it, which is just clicking it and it's gonna create a path. But this path, if you, if you see it now, let me see if I can actually show you better. If you see it, it creates a path that is not editable. However, if I take this path right now, this actual shape and I press Alt and then I press the Unite tool and I actually do this, what you're gonna see is that they look the same, but also one is more editable than the other one because this is a new path, but this is still retained the, the path that was inside of it. And I can actually edit it anywhere I want. So we understand now the difference between doing it as a normal application or with a compound application. I think the second one is really useful. And you can actually, at the end, when you're happy with your design, you just expand it and it applies it too. So it's better to work it the proper way and just doing it as a compound shape and then you expand it at the end. Okay, let's talk about the minus front tool. Minus front, as the name says, it removes the element from the front of the selection and it trims the element behind it. Let's explain it more visually. Let me copy, let me make a copy of the element and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to click arrange and then bring to front and we're going to select them and I'm going to, it's going to trim the front element. And if I do it the other way, it's going to actually trim backwards. So what this is trying to explain is that the element that is in the front, is going to always be trim out of the shape that we're selecting. Let's move on to the intersect part of the tool. So with the intersect tool, it's going to actually trace an outline of the region overlapped by the objects. More visually, it will take the object and it's going to take an area where the objects intersect. Let me try to do it in a different way. I'm going to move this square like right here and I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to move this, this square to this corner. And let's try to do the intersection again. I'm going to intersect the object. It's going to take this part. And in this one, as you can see here, the intersection is right here. And if I try to do the intersection again, it's going to take that part. If I bring this one to the front 
and I do again the intersection, it's gonna bring it to the intersection. The main difference with the intersections is that the element that is at the front is the one that the new path or shape is gonna take the color of. You gotta keep that in mind, it's really important. Let's talk about the exclude option in the Pathfinder. It will trace the non-overlapping areas of the objects and makes overlapping areas transparent. What they're trying to say saying this is that if you use it, the result is gonna be the opposite of the intersect because it's gonna actually make the center transparent but it's gonna take the outside element and it's gonna make a shape out of it what is really also really interesting at this let me press, press command c i'm gonna copy it and i'm gonna apply it this way so imagine that you're working in a logo and you want to work your intersection and you're not completely sure about it here you have an option to do it you just use the intersection and you just work it around so that's why I actually believe that working Alt or Option when you're working with the Pathfinder can be really helpful. Let's move on to the next area of the Pathfinder tools, which is the actual Pathfinders. The Pathfinders are for a different use. By a different use, I just mean for more complicated shapes. Let's talk about the main difference between the shape modes and the Pathfinders. Again, the shape modes are only for simple shapes. The Pathfinders are for more complicated shapes, and they're gonna make a better job with more complicated shapes shapes. Let's, let's take a look at what they do. The first one is divide and to, to actually work with the divide, let's read what it does. It says that it separates a piece of artwork into a component field faces. A face is an area undivided by a line or a segment. Let's try to use it this way. I add another element because this require a more complicated shape to actually see what the actual tools do. If I click divide, so if you see now, it just crops all the elements where there are intersections. Let me go to the isolation mode so I can show you better. If you see, all the elements were actually chopped where they are trimmed, where they had an interception. It's a really interesting tool and it's really good for separating your work when you're working with some type of shapes. Let's talk about the trim, which is this second option right here. The trim option removes the path of a field object that is hidden, removes any strokes that doesn't merge objects of the same color. Let's explain it more visually. If I take these objects and I duplicate them and let me add them stroke, let's add them some stroke. If I take these elements and I actually trim them, do you see how it removes the stroke of the elements that are actually don't belong to the main path only it only applies the elements to the outside area of the object if i use the same tool and i actually do it without the stroke and i apply it the result is going to be really similar but it's completely different as the result of working with the divide tool let's work with the merge tool so if i take this element and i try to merge them together the elements that contain the same color are gonna be grouped together, but the others are gonna be separated because they don't belong to the same shape. And I know what you're gonna say when we work with the merge tool. What's the difference between the merge and the actual uh, unite tool, which is in the shape modes? Well, I'm gonna tell you, the results are gonna be completely different. If I do this with the unite tool in the shape mode, my output is gonna be something completely different because it's gonna, it doesn't matter the color of the actual shapes. It's just gonna make make it all together one single shape. But with the merge option, since the elements are more complicated, the colors that are similar are gonna stay together because they're color similars. If they are not similar, they're gonna be trim. And that's the most important part about the merge option. Okay, let's talk about the crop section in the pathfinders and how this is different from the intersect option in the shape modes. As I stated here, results in the overlapping backmost shape being retained and a hollow invisible path where the rest of the top object was. This is our top object. Let me change the color so you can see it more clearly. So this is gonna be your top object and I'm gonna make a copy of it so you can visualize more what the tool does. And I'm gonna make another copy just to show you what the intersect area will do because I know that's a question that you might have because many designers don't know this difference. If I take this element, this square, and I select it, and I use the crop tool, it's gonna create like a square where the, where the um, pink square was, it's gonna be like a selection, and it's gonna crop everything that was outside of it. If I take this square and I move it around, 
and I rearrange it to take this area and I do it again, it's gonna again take only the part that where it's supposed to be the square and it's gonna take it out of the shape. It's gonna trim it to make that shape. And you might say now, Leo, why didn't you just use the intersect option? The one right here, the one that you use in the shape modes. And I'll tell you because the result is gonna be completely different. If I use the intersect tool, the result is not gonna be even similar because it, again, shape modes are for simple shapes and the pathfinders are for more complicated shapes. Uh, let's go to the outline section in the pathfinders. What it says in the Adobe website that it does is that it divides an object into to its component line segments or edges. This command is useful for preparing artwork that needs a trap for overprinting objects. Let's explain it better. If I take this element and I apply the outline tool, you will see that it creates a series of lines. Let me add a stroke to this so you can see it better. And I'm gonna try to separate them. I'm gonna double click it in, in, in the shape and I'm gonna actually, in the isolation mode, I'm gonna to show you how it separates the shape. It just creates an amount of lines of the element. It doesn't trim it all the way together. It just creates the outside lines of the element. Isn't that really cool? This is really useful. When you're working with some sort of designs, you will need this tool. Let's move on to the actual final tool, which is gonna be the minus back tool. I know what you're thinking and you're totally right. I don't understand what's Adobe logic put in the same element because they do actually the same thing. It takes, this one takes the front and this one takes the back. For example, it will remove the element at the back. If I take this and I apply minus back, it's gonna just remove the back element. And if I take this and I apply minus front, it takes the opposite way. So it will take the, in this one it will take the back, in this one it will take the front. If I take this element and I bring it to the front, as you will see, it will trim if I the yellow element, because it's the one at the back, you always prioritize the element at the back to be trimmed. So this is the minus back option. Okay, guys, I just want to say thank you. And for being at till the end of the video, I hope you have learned something that you didn't know about this tool. And if you have any questions about the tool, please put it in the comments below. I hope you find this content really useful. Again, Thank you guys, and I hope you had a wonderful time learning how to properly use the Pathfinder tools in Adobe Illustrator. If you haven't subscribed, please consider so. That will help me to understand if this content was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again in the next video.